Good day, beautiful people. Pastor Ramon Phillips here, and I would like to personally thank you for watching our YouTube videos. We know that your time is precious and important, and we greatly appreciate your time. Also, I would like to take a quick moment to personally invite you to partner with us financially. We support 13 churches in the Philippines under the name of Restoration Church, and we also support a, a ministry here that is a prison transition home called Don't look back. They transition uh, people getting out of prison back into the real world. And it is an awesome ministry. We also support one of our local middle schools that is in our neighborhood. And so if you would like to partner with us, just text to the number that you see on the screen, or you can go to our restorationtulsa.org website and go to the gift tab there. You can also, while you're there, you can also listen to our sermons that will connect you to our podcast. And if you just want to go to uh, your favorite podcast, app. You can listen to us and find us at Restoration Church Podcast. Thank you again for watching. Thank you for being a part of our ministry. We greatly appreciate you. God bless. All right, today we are going to be doing part six of what's the name of this series? Oh, y'all disappoint me. Y'all disappoint me. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Come on, Lord, please forgive me. Come on, come on. If I, I got to preach this. This is a message that you got to receive today. You got to get it. What's the name of this series? Yes. All right, let's stand back up. Everybody stand back up. I don't care if it's two people or 20 people or 200 people in here. We got to have the joy of the Lord. We got to be ready to receive what he has for us. So what's the name of this series? A faith. One more time. The attitude of faith. You may be seated. <laughs> it's just important, ladies and gentlemen. I couldn't conclude today letting you guys be like days ago. Just like, oh, yeah, the attitude of faith. I, I, I concluding, I'm concluding today with a special message that will, 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 will put this all in, in, into one ball and wrap everything up, if you will. But it's important. As my wife said, we are ambassadors. We cannot come to a church. And, and, and walk out of here dead. If we did, something's wrong. We need, we need to do a restructuring. We need to do a complete restructuring, get a new pastor, all of that. Because it starts from the top down, and it should work from the bottom up. We should always have the vigor of the Lord, and we should come here to get filled with him. And then we should leave this place and share it and come back. This is what I consider a gas station, a filling station, where we come to get God's word. So we go right back out there, and wherever we go, home, work, gas station, grocery store, no matter where we go, we have the attitude of faith. People know. And in fact, even when you're going through something personal in your life and you say, hey, I need y'all to pray for me, pray for my family. We're struggling, but I'm still going to have an attitude of faith. I'm going to have a posture. I'm going to have a disposition. I'm going to have a manner of faith. Wherever I go, whatever I do, whatever is going on, I'm going to choose to have, what's the name of this series? The attitude of faith. This is so important. And if that does that one more time, I'm going to switch mics just to make sure because I don't want to get in the way of God's word today with technical issues. Amen? All right, so the attitude of faith is the name of this series. Today is the conclusion. But before I tell you what the title, the subtitle of today's lesson is, I want to just remind us of a few key things. One of them is the definition of attitude. And it is the things I just listed in the opening. Manner disposition. Somebody say that with me. Posture. Okay. Or check this out. It says feeling. Uh, it says tendency or orientation, especially of the mind. And many of you know that when the Bible's talking about the mind or talking about the heart, it's talking about the same thing. Amen. So what is the disposition, the manner, the posture, the tendency, the orientation of your heart, your mind, especially when it comes to what's the main thing we've been talking about? Faith. What is your attitude when it comes to faith? What is your manner when it comes to faith? When, when, when you need to believe for something, are, are, are you believing like, yeah, it might happen, it might not happen? Or you're like, hey, God said it's going to happen. If God said it's going to happen, it's going to happen. Let me tell you the key trick where we miss it a lot of times. We think there is a difference between when God tells us uh, to do something and when we say God told us to do something and God didn't tell us to do it. But I truly believe in my heart that people know at the, car, uh, the core of who they are if God told them to do it or not or if it's just them. Sometimes you know when it's just your flesh. 
Uh, but, 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 but for those of us who know better and we've practiced getting out of our flesh and getting into the spirit, we know when God's talking. I know God told me it's going to do this. I know. And, and a lot of times because we know how powerful that is, we don't say anything to anybody. I know. I, I, I'm, I think Kenny, Kenny kind of hesitated today. He said, I think I got a word for Connie, but man, I, ooh, boy, ooh. So I, I said, if you got a Kenny, then you get, let it go, let it go, let it go. So this is what we want to do, be obedient, amen? Be obedient and have an attitude of faith. So just wanted to remind you of the definition. And then the other thing I wanted to remind you was that our thread scripture from one to today, which will be six, is this, Hebrews chapter 11, verse one. And it says this, clear as day, faith is the confidence somebody say confidence Confidence. I said somebody say confidence Confidence. faith is the confidence that what we hope somebody say hope Hope. will actually happen it gives us assurance somebody say assurance Assurance. about things we cannot see somebody say cannot see see. let's read that one more time it says faith is the confidence somebody shout confidence Confidence. that what we hope somebody shout hope. hope will actually happen and give us assurance somebody shout assurance about the things we cannot see. Somebody say, cannot see. Faith is believing in whatever we cannot see. Faith is believing what we cannot see. Faith is believing, trusting in something we cannot see. A lot of you serve this God named Jehovah who you've never seen in person. A lot of you know his son and claim he's your savior who you've never met in the flesh, but you've met in the spirit. Some of you say that spirit in which you met him in that he's left for you to guide you to be your navigation system. You can't see it, but you believe in that thing. So if we truly believe in that thing, that means we have to trust that thing. We have to trust the God, Jehovah, that created us, even though we've never seen him face to face. We have to trust his son that died on the cross for us and shed blood to cover our sins and to reconnect us, to restore, for there to be restoration between God and his people. And and we've never met him face to face in the flesh, but you've met him in the spirit. Some of you believe in this thing called the spirit, but, 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 but you've never seen it as a fog that comes up out of nowhere and says, and you see a glow in it and electricity, like, I am the Holy Spirit. I am here to bless you, my child. Oh, that's the Holy Spirit. How many of you seen that cloud with the lightning in it? Raise your hand. Okay. So faith is believing in what you cannot see, but you can feel right here in your heart. Amen? Amen? So having an attitude of faith means you're going to have a manner, a posture of faith. Not an arrogance, not conceited, not narcissistic, but an attitude. I always try to say that I I used to have this spirit of perfection, and I've learned something about perfection. You can ask my wife or you can ask anyone who knows me well. I used to have an obsession with perfection. Like I was obsessed with it. Like if it's not perfect, it's not good enough. I'm not going to accept it. And God had to change that out of me because all of those who seek that perfection, I've seen them drive, been driven mad. Some of the greatest people that I look up to, uh, whether it be musicians or, or uh, software producers or men, like meet these great men and great women, uh, sometimes in their obsession for perfection, they've gone mad. And this is why they say that most geniuses are on the verge of being insane. Most geniuses are really about to be crazy. This is why most rich people who are very famous have a lot of issues because they're like striving for this picture that we try to paint and produce for them that is not really real. But I believe what God shifted me into is to have a spirit of excellence. What that means is I'm going to give my best effort in everything I do. I may not get it right. My best effort might be 70% for somebody else whose best effort is 90%. Who knows? Somebody else's best effort is 20%, but that really is and truly their best effort. And God sees all of those the same when he knows you are giving the best that you've got. 
That is what I call a spirit of excellence. Once I understood that spirit of excellence, it allowed me not to strive for perfection, but to strive for excellence. Why am I talking about excellence? Because I believe that if you have an attitude of faith, you can strive for excellence knowing that God's got me. God's got me. Jesus died to cover my sins. The Holy Spirit truly is here to lead me. And so if I go through the the range of subtitles from one to six, the first one was uncomfortable faith. Because many of you know and will agree that having faith is uncomfortable. Especially when God asks you to do something, you're like, God, that's uncomfortable for me because that's getting me out of my comfort zone. But how many of you know you can't grow and you can't strive and you can't thrive if you want to stay in your comfort zone? Amen. Amen. God wants us to move. And then we had the even if was the second one. Even if faith, even if it doesn't look like you thought it should look. How many of you have had those instances in your life where you thought, man, I thought that was going to look like this or be like this, but it wasn't. And in fact, in that even if faith, God showed us and showed me that if you will have faith in me, even if it doesn't look like you wanted to, it actually is going to surpass what you had in mind. The fantasy you had, minds was bigger. But see, you, you got caught up in this idea. Instead of just saying, God, let your will be done. I know you're going to bless me with a new house. Let your will be done. And then you get that new house, like, mm, it's not as big as like as I wanted it to be. Ooh, the backyard don't look. I thought it was going to be an a, a in-ground pool, not on top. Man, you know? Hey, you got your pool, you got your house, and you got everything you asked for. You know what I'm saying? But some of us, we just, it, if it doesn't look exactly like we want, we don't have faith. And God said, you got to have that even if faith. And then we went to the, it's in, uh, the impossible faith, meaning that whatever man thinks is impossible, or actually what is impossible for man is not impossible for God. Nothing is impossible for God. Nothing is impossible for the creator of the world, the creator of you and I. There is nothing that cannot be done through God. Amen? That's impossible. you got to have that impossible faith that even when people say, you're being impossible right now because that can't happen. You say, i got impossible faith. My God said it can be done, and all things can be done through Jesus Christ, and nothing is impossible with my God. Okay? Impossible. And then we had to have that gut check faith. What we got is like, I know what people are saying and I know what it looks like, but I can feel in my spirit, in my gut, I know God's telling me that this can be done. Or I need to go this way, or I need to ask for this, or I need to speak on this, or I need to, whatever it is, I got to have a gut check. We're going to all have a moment in our life where God's going to say something and then other people are going to say something else and you got to do a gut check. I know what you said, and I know what you said, but God said, that's what I'm going to roll with. That's what I'm going to go with. And then there was the last week's redemption faith, knowing that God has redeemed you through his son. You can have faith knowing that you've been redeemed so that if you know that you're redeemed, you will not live your life reducing the greatness that God's created you to have and to be down to your stupid little mistakes. How many of you have made stupid mistakes in life in here before? Oh, uh, oh, we got some people that ain't made no mistakes in here before. How many of you made stupid mistakes in your life? We all have, amen. Everybody has, myself included. Okay, we've all made stupid mistakes, but if we repent, that means we ask God for forgiveness and actually do a mind shift like, what did I do wrong so I don't repeat that action again? God says you are redeemed, and that stupid mistake, little or big, has been redeemed by the blood of Jesus when he died on that cross, and it was redeemed when he raised from the grave to be with us and show us that he was Jesus when he ascended back to heaven, redemption faith. Well, today God gave me uh, the last how we need to wrap it up, and it all has to do with something we all deal with. I need you to listen closely. This is something we all deal with, that if this one thing gets in the way, it will collapse that uncomfortable. It will collapse the even if. It will collapse the, the, the impossible. It will collapse the gut check. It will collapse the, the redemption, and it's called fear. And he, what he wanted me to say today is that we need to have fear-fighting faith. And that's today's subtitle, Fear Fighting Faith. If you want to remember it by having FFF, Fear Fighting Faith. Now, I need somebody to say this with me. Fear Fighting Faith. 
Now, before we say it the next two times, I want you to dig down in your gut, in your diaphragm, and I want you to have an attitude when you put this in the atmosphere because when you leave here today, you're going to acknowledge that whatever it is that's been scaring you for step, from stepping into what God has for you, you're not going to be afraid anymore. So again, I want you to dig down in your gut, down in your diaphragm, and I want you to say it with me, fear, fighting, faith. You ready? Let's go. Fear, fighting, faith. I think that was good, but just for good measures and just to make sure I heard a, an attitude of faith within that. Let's go one more time. Fear, Fear fighting, fighting faith. faith. He says you got to understand that God does not want you to have fear. In fact, in fact, our word even tells us that he did not create us to have fear. But the first scripture I want to give you today is going to come out of Isaiah 41.10. Does anybody know this one by heart? Because, man, this is one we really need to get down in our spirit. This is really one we need to live by. It says this. Uh, this is the English Standard Version. It says, fear not. Now, if I can just be real with you guys for a minute, those are two words that are usually the last words we turn to when something pops up that we're not expecting or something pops up that we don't like, or something pops up that is devastating, the first sense we have, which is not always bad, is a sense of uh, awareness, uh, of a sense of danger. But, but, but those, those are okay. God gave you those antennas for a reason. That's why it's called discernment. He's given you a spirit of discernment for a reason. Like, oh, something's wrong. Oh, don't go in there. Oh, don't go that way. Uh, don't be involved. I'll give you a quick little story before I go back into the rest of the scripture. We were going uh, to meet uh, uh, my sister-in-law and brother-in-law for uh, dinner last night to celebrate um, her birthday this week. And we were on the expressway, and I kept thinking in my head, I know there's three different ways, but what's the best way to get there and what's the quickest way? And, and, and Stephanie's like, you want me to pull up GPS? And I was like, yeah. She tried to pull it up and something was going on that wasn't working. I was like, yeah. I said, I, I got it. I think I'm going to get off on here. No, I'm going to get off. No, 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 I'm going to get, I'm gonna get off here. And so I made a choice to get off on Riverside. When we get off on Riverside, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. So we had it set. And then right before our exit came up, there was... Peoria, and then there was Riverside, and there was a traffic jam stopped right at Riverside. All the way, you could see it for miles, like, what is going on? Is it construction? And then you saw lights. But anyway, it's like God gave me that because I got off and everything was fine. We found out this morning, just watching the news, that it was a bad, bad wreck. The lives were lost in that, in that incident. And it's just funny because I thought God told me where to get off. I had made all these other, maybe I, I had originally thought to go past that and get off. God told me to get off on that. Just little things like that. What does that got to do with faith? Just listening to God. Just little things like that. And, and, and fear not. Fear not. Our first thought was, oh, we need to, oh, I, I started praying. I don't know what's going on, but I see lights and we just started praying. We just started praying. Okay, fear not. Let's continue this scripture. It says, Isaiah 41 10 says, Fear not for, oh my goodness, this is good. Here it is. For I am with you. The I, when we continue reading this, represents God, Jehovah. God, Jehovah. God, the creator. When you see I, remember God, the creator. Fear not for I, God, am with you. Be not dismayed, for I, God, am your God, your God, and I, God, will strengthen you. Hello. I don't think anybody really saw that, but let me keep going. God says, I will help you. Oh, my goodness. He's going to strengthen and help me. I will uphold you. What? He's going to save me. He's going to, he says, he's going to strengthen me. He's going to guide me. He says, he's going to uphold me with my mighty, righteous right hand. Fear not. If you have the attitude of faith, hey, ladies and gentlemen, guess what? Let's be real. We're going to get scared. We are going to get scared. Things are going to happen, especially when it's the element of surprise. <gasps> We, we freak out, uh, but, 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 but if you have an attitude of faith, you'll regain yourself real quick and go, oh, wait, 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 wait. Okay, I don't care. I, I, don't, I don't care. 
I'm going to have the attitude of faith that I'm trusting that God's going to be with me through whatever this situation is. And God's also going to say, hey, you better pick up your feet and run. That's your discernment saying run. Just because you fear not doesn't mean you're going to be stupid. Run, Forrest, run. Okay, but we got to have that discernment, and your faith will tell you that. And somebody might even say, why'd you run like a little old chicken? Because God told me to. He told me to get up out of there, and that's what I did. I had the discernment to know that there was danger, so I got out of Dodge. Amen? I mean, fear not. Just because you're being smart and you're sensing danger and you're moving or you're avoiding things doesn't mean you're scared. Uh, It just means you're being smart. But there's a difference between being smart, having discernment, and being scared. A lot of us are operating in fear. I'm going to tell you something that you probably don't know. And if you do know, God bless you. The reason our country is in dismay right now, because we're letting the silly politicians dictate what we do and how we're supposed to live and how we treat each other. And you know what their game is? I don't care which side it is. You know what their game is? If I can get Bruce to fear Connie, and I can get Connie to get her people together, and Bruce get his people together, and y'all go at each other... The enemy has his best work to do. Yeah, I got them fighting. Now they're not paying attention to what's really going on. I'm going to stoke up racism. I'm going to stoke up poverty. I'm going to stoke up uh, all kind of things. Or uh, We're going to bash women. We're going to bash those who live lifestyles. We're going to bash, and then we're going to call ourselves Christians. And Christians are not paying attention. Uh Uh-oh, where you going, Pastor? Uh Uh-oh, don't step on no toes. Uh Uh-oh, I'm going there this morning. I just want to show you that if we don't live in fear or let others put us in fear, we can see clear. Do you hear how that rhymed? If we don't live in fear, we can see clear. And we can see when the people with us are out of pocket, and we can see when we're out of pocket. We can also see when others are out of pocket, not in judgment, but just to know that how to make our decisions. Because we cannot live in fear. We can't afford to have faith but live in fear. And this is why God said the last one should be called fear fighting faith. Because we need to fight fear with our, say it with me. We need to fight fear with our what? We need to fight fear with our what? So we're going to have fear fighting what? Because we're going to fight fear with our what? So we're going to have fear fighting what? Because we are going to fight fear with our faith. Are y'all hearing me this morning? This means that whatever is scaring you right now, have faith to know that God is with you. How do I know this? You're just up there preaching, just trying to sell us. Oh, oh, well, hey, if you believe in the word, don't listen to me. Listen to Isaiah 41.10. It says, fear not, for I am with you. Oh, some man just wrote that. That's just, uh, well, the people who wrote this Bible were inspired by God. So I believe it's God's word. Hello. You don't have to, but I do. And anybody else that believes with me, say amen. Amen. Fear not, for I am with you. It says, be not dismayed. Guys, we're going to have the flash, bang, boom, bang uh, uh, element of surprise. This is life. If you think about it, every day is kind of a surprise. You wake up and there's all kind of things we got to deal with that is a surprise. And we got a choice to make when that surprise happens. Are we going to gather ourselves and say, okay, well, I'm a believer, and I believe in God, and I believe in his word, and no matter what's going on, God's with me, actually. Oh, you know what? You know what? I'm going to have the attitude of faith that I'm going to stand in prayer. Uh, And and in fact, not only am I going to stand in prayer, I'm going to pull a lorry and send out a text and say, hey, y'all, I need prayer from, can you, 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 and anybody else, and your mom and your daddy, your cousins, grandma, can y'all pray for this situation? And guess what we start doing? Oh, yes, we can. Guess what happens on Wednesday nights when we show up? We got a prayer list that we write out. We got prayer requests. Okay, what's going on? Who's going on? Who needs healing? What happened? And then we do do the human thing like, oh, my goodness, that's horrible. That's sad. That's bad. Mm, mm, mm." And all of that. But we have enough attitude of faith that we start praying into that thing. And not only do we pray, we have an expectation, okay? And sometimes the the reports we get are scary. They are devastating news. But when we have an attitude, when we have the audacity, somebody say audacity. Audacity. When we have the audacity, that's a big 20-point word. Somebody say audacity. audacity. When we have the audacity, the gall, the nerve to have an attitude of faith about something that man's saying, that's impossible. That's not going to happen. We believe anyway. Amen? 
I said, we believe anyway. Amen? Amen. I said, we believe anyway. Somebody say, I believe. I believe. Say, I believe. I believe. Say, I'm going to fight my fears with my faith. I got something really powerful to show you guys real quick. Something really powerful. I'm going to switch mics. Can I switch that mic? I'm going to switch mics because I, I want to show you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going to show you guys something. I knew this was powerful. That's why that doesn't happen. But let me show you something. God wants to show you this today. Oh, you guys got to pay attention to this. Oh, my goodness. See, before I tell you what he wants me to reveal next, understand this. There is something that happens when you walk in faith. There is something that takes place when you have an attitude of faith. There is something that happens when you make a choice that no matter what's going on, you're going to have faith. You're going to stand in your faith. There is something that happens, and I like to call it this, the oil of faith. Somebody say the oil of faith. Somebody say the oil of faith. You guys know how oil is produced? Let's, let's take olives, for instance. They have to go through, olives have to go through a pressing. There has to be a pressing of that olive to extract the oil from that. Somebody say faith. Somebody say fear-fighting faith. See, when we choose to stand in our faith, no matter what's going on in our life, there's an oil that is pressed from your faith. Somebody listen to me right now. There is an oil that is pressed, that is produced when you make a decision to walk in your faith, no matter what the situation, the circumstances look like. When you say, I'm, I'm going to make a choice. I know this does not look good for me right now. This does not look good for my family. This does not look good for my finances right now. This is not looking good for my marriage right now. This doesn't look good, but I'm going to have, y'all say it with me, faith. Oh, y'all not going to have faith? <laughs> I'm the only one? Preach it to yourself, pastor. It's okay. We're going to have faith no matter what's going on. Hallelujah. I'm going to choose to, no matter what's going on, have faith. Instance or a time or two when I've had a bad week. Not really a bad week, but I'll have a bad day, and, and you, and you kind of know it because it's kind of has some leftover, you know, and it kind of falls into the next day and the next day. But, but, but what happens is uh, uh, my wife will say snap out of it, or I'll tell her to snap out of it, and, and we, we start speaking scripture to each other, and, and the other one will kind of look at the other one sideways like, oh, I don't want to hear no scripture right now. I don't want to hear. But, but it's something about the word when it's spoken, even when people don't want to hear it. It's something about what's produced because their faith might be, their, 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 their flesh may be rejecting it, but, but, but their soul is saying, we need that brother. We, come on, we need that sister. Come on, come on, give it to me because uh, my faith is being activated. And when our faith is being activated and when our faith is under pressure, when our faith is being tested, it produces an oil. And this oil will turn your disappointment into an ointment. Oh, I don't think y'all heard me this morning. I said this oil that is produced from your faith will turn your disappointment into an ointment. An ointment, that oil that comes from your face, uh, your faith can bless you, those around you, your family, anything you put your hands on. That oil is just as powerful as the oil that we have to anoint people's head. That oil comes from your faith. You guys know how wine is made? It's a pressing of the grapes. There's a pressure that happens. You guys know how diamonds are made? There's a pressure on that coal that turns that, uh, uh, that crusty, old, flaky, ugly thing into something so beautiful because of the crushing, the pressure. So, ladies and gentlemen, don't walk away and be dismayed because your faith is being tested. Huh? Some of you in here right now, your faith is being tested. You're like, I don't know. I'm starting to wonder if God's even real because he don't be listening to me when I be praying. But God is listening. He's just not doing it in the time that you thought he should do it. This is why you got to have even if faith. And then you look at things and you're like, I know what I said and I know what everybody else is saying around me. But the way things are adding up right now, it's impossible. But when you have impossible faith, I know it looks impossible, but my God can do anything. Nothing is impossible with my God. There is an oil that is produced from that. 
when you make a choice that, man, I don't have this FOMO. Me and my wife have been using this a lot lately. She turned me on to it, and I was like, yeah, I forgot. It's the fear of missing out. See, a lot of people don't make the right decisions because they don't want to be left out or they don't want to be unpopular. But if God is telling you that something needs to be done or said, and you're like, yeah, but they're going to get mad at me. Oh, they might not like me no more. Oh, they might not have me over for dinner no more. Oh, that ain't the popular thing right now. You got to get over that and have that gut check faith. There's an oil that is produced when you say, I hear what you're saying, but God is telling me this, and I don't care if y'all get mad at me. When you have that, there's an oil that's produced from that. Because even the people that get mad at you when they see, oh, my God, he or she was right. There's a respect that starts to happen. Like, maybe they do hear from God. Maybe I will rock with them. Maybe when they tell me something next time, I might put on that exterior. Like, you don't know what you're talking about. But really, in my heart, I'll be like, I'm going to listen to that. I'm going to do what they told me to do or not do what they told me to do. There is an oil that is produced from your faith, especially when your faith is being tested. Your faith has been tested. But there is an oil that is produced when you make the choice that we're digging in anyway. We're digging in. Your faith has been tested. This whole row, your faith has been tested. But by your obedience and your, your, your discernment and your attitude to dig in anyway, when even you're like, I don't feel like going to church. I don't feel like praising him. I don't, don't want to hear no scripture right now. When you've made the choice to receive it anyway, there is a blessing. There is an oil that is dripping off of that whole family. It's an oil that's dripping up. You may not see it. You may not see it, but others are watching because of your faith. There's an oil dripping off of your faith. That woman and that man sitting behind you, there's an oil dripping off of their faith. There's an oil over here that is so powerful, and you're holding on to it. You're not sharing. You're being a na 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 boo boo. I got it, but I'm not going to share with you. And God said, that's enough of that. We need you to start walking in that attitude of faith so that that drip, drip can bless those who are walking around you right now. It don't always have to be the pastor with the anointing oil to anoint you. Sometimes it's the oil from your faith that will anoint you and anoint others around you. The oil of faith. I want to give you a quick example. See, all of the Gospels talk about the lady. Some of them talk about her in a way that uh, it's funny. It's in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, but I want to show you that Matthew, Mark, and John share the same story, but Luke's is a little different because I don't think he knew this person as well. But I want to tell you about this woman who witnessed Jesus do something awfully miraculous. In fact, this woman's name was Mary. She had a sister named Martha, and they, Jesus healed their brother, Lazarus. He was healed, not healed, but brought from the dead. Okay, and she witnessed this, okay? She saw something so powerful. So something happens. If this says, if you'll read those texts and find out about the lady with the anointing jar, uh, or, or oil, okay? Some call it perfume. I'll call it the anointed expensive perfume oil, okay? Because that's what it was, okay? It says that this woman had the audacity. She made a choice that she was going to take this really expensive oil and go do something with it. I want you guys to think about something for a minute. Uh, there has to be some kind of faith for this woman to do what she's about to do. Faith. There had to be some kind of attitude, some kind of, somebody say audacity. Some kind of audacity of this woman because she was getting ready to walk into a room full of men and if you knew back in the day, the men, they rule everything. When you shut up, you sit down, and you just do what you're told to do, okay, and serve us. Uh, how many of y'all going for that today? Now, there is an order. There is an order in the Bible that tells women to obey their husbands. And that, but the husbands are not supposed to treat them like they're st redheaded stepchilds just because they're a woman and that there's an order. If we're disobedient or disrespectful with that order, God will get us, man. So get that thing right. Uh, but anyway, she's getting ready to walk into this environment. So there has to be an, uh, 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 this has to be very, uh, what was the name of our first, uh, 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 uncomfortable. This had to be very uncomfortable for her to get ready to walk in and do what she's about to do. And she probably had to think, what if I walk in here and do what I feel like God's telling me to do, that gut check? What if I walk in here and everybody totally rejects me, uh, even Jesus? Well, even if Jesus rejects me, I don't get 
get that feeling, but I'm going to do it anyway. That requires an attitude of faith. And then when she walked in, she does something crazy. She breaks this really expensive alabaster jar full of perfume oil, and she pours it over Jesus and anoints him, okay? And the people get indignant. The fellas around, hey, crazy lady, hey, 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 what you doing? And, and you know, probably at that point, she probably should have stopped and, and ran out like, oh, they're not receiving it. But she did. She just kept on doing it. She just kept on doing it. She had an attitude of faith. What was she doing and why is she doing it? Well, back in that day, when you did something like that, that's what you did after a body when it was dead. The kind of thing she was performing on Jesus was supposed to be done after he was dead. But see, this was a prophetic act that was taking place that she decided she was going to be obedient. Do y'all think she was comfortable when she walked in? Y'all think she really wanted to do this? Y'all think she didn't uh, fear rejection? Y'all didn't, you think she didn't fear maybe she would be an outcast after that? She had the nerve to walk in and, and pour that on Jesus. Who does she think she is? She went in and poured the perfume oil on Jesus. And as they got indignant about it, okay, it is Mary. As they got indignant about it, Jesus said to them, leave her alone. Okay? This woman, what this woman is doing is will be spoke about forever. Okay? So she's doing the right thing. It says somebody even complained and said, that was an expensive jar. You know what we could have did with that jar? You know we could have fed a lot of poor people with that? She's going to come in here and break at the nerve of this lady. As I'm doing my research, it keeps pointing to one person. It keeps pointing to one person who was making a big fuss, and it was a person who was always seems to be concerned about money. Does anybody know who was in Jesus' camp who had a problem with money? Okay, Judas. Seems like Judas was the one making the big uproar. Do your research for yourself. Don't just trust me. But he was the one making a noise about, you know, we could have deal with that. Uh, well, girl, we wasting money like that. When she was like, I don't care how much it costs. The oil, the oil from this bottle is going to bless this body before whatever is going to happen. Now, I don't know what God told Mary. I just know that she had the attitude of faith, the nerve, the audacity to walk in and break this bottle on Jesus and anoint him. Some says that she even poured it on his feet and wiped it with her hair. Come on, that takes a lot of nerve. Man, just imagine if we, those of us who, who or think we're nobodies, just had the nerve to do what God told us to do when he told us to do it, the oil that will be produced from that. God is saying, your faith, Terry, even though you may not think so, your faith oil is dripping all over your family right now. You may not think this, Beverly, but the oil of your faith is dripping all over your husband right now. Although it seems like he may reject it, he is receiving it. You, you don't know, Gail, that by your attitude of coming to church, no matter what's going through, and even though you don't feel like it, there's an oil being produced on you right now. Gail, you don't realize, Keith and Cassie, that your obedience to do things in the background and say, don't give us any credit, don't make a big deal out of it. There's an oil being produced from what you do. You don't understand, Miss Sharon Goodnight, that the letters that you write and the cards that you send people, there's an oil that drips from that because of your obedience. You don't realize what you do to people when you just have the nerve to have faith in God, believing in his son Jesus and believing in the Holy Spirit. Are y'all hearing me this morning? Are you hearing me this morning? I'm trying to tell you something that will and can change your life. There is an oil from your faith. And when you receive that, guess what's going to happen with your faith? It's going to get tested. That's why you're going to have to have that fear fighting faith, the kind of fight that fights your fear. When you start getting scared and thinking, oh my God, Oh, my God. And now I'm using the Lord's name in vain. And oh, my God. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my word. Oh, my. And we start getting scared and walking in that fear instead of walking in that faith. I declare today that if we make a decision, a choice to walk in our faith and not our fear, that you will see your life just break out like crazy. All the things, your prayers will be just begin to spurt out like, oh my goodness, I've been waiting for that thing for 20 years and it's just popping out all over the place because I had the nerve to have that uh, mustard seed faith that turned into a mustard plant and that is producing all kinds of things for my life. And because of my faith and because I'm not going to stay 
stand in my fear. I'm going to stand in my faith. When I say something's going to be done in the name of Jesus, it's going to be done. Even if it don't happen right now, today when I snap my fingers like a genie popping out of the bottle or like I'm some kind of Aladdin magician, it's not happening right now. But I believe, I got the nerve, the audacity to believe that my prayer will be answered. Because even the word in Isaiah said, fear not and do not be dismayed. For I am with you. God says he's with us all the time. He's with you all the time. Even in your fight. Even when you're like, I want to cuss this person out right now. I got some words that will be really nice and fitting for this situation right now. And I will feel so good afterwards, maybe. But but, but God is with you then. God, where are you? I've been praying for you to give me release on this. Where are you? But you still say, I'm sorry, Lord, I know you're there. And when you make that choice to say, I'm sorry, Lord, I just had to vent. There's an oil that gets produced from your faith. Like in 2 Kings chapter 4, there was a lady who came to the prophet Elijah and said, hey, uh, she was not just, hey, she was crying. She was destroyed. She was dismayed. She was in fear because her husband had died. And, 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 and he died, and, and, and the debt collectors were coming. And you know, How many of you know, we, we were having this conversation the other day. I don't remember who with. But, like, you know, the sad thing about it is it feels insensitive when you say to someone when they just had a death and offended that life goes on. That is so insensitive. But you know what the truth is? Life goes on. If somebody dies, the bill collector's like, oh, sorry about that. Okay, so when are we going to get our money? It's a cold, cold world out there. Okay. The debt collectors are coming. In fact, they say, if you don't pay up, sister girl, we're taking your sons as slaves. So she goes to the prophet. She goes to the man, Elijah. Now, first of all, why did she run to the man, the prophet, the man of God? Uh, There has to be some kind of faith there to go to a man of faith, uh, a believer, and, and, and then ask him for advice. See, that takes faith. And then it takes another kind of faith because he said, well, how can I help you? And she told him the situation, and he had the nerve to say, well, what, you have, what do you have in your house? I ain't got nothing in my house. Yo, you crazy, man? Did you not hear what I just said? All I got is some oil and a little leftover this and that. He said, okay, go home, and I want you to have your kids go borrow a bunch of jars from all of your neighbors and friends. And I want you to take that little bit of oil that you got, and I want you to fill up the rest of the bottle. <laughs> Wait, what? Uh, maybe this guy doesn't understand math, or maybe he doesn't understand algebra, or maybe he doesn't understand the basic functions of add and subtract that I only have a little bit, sir. Did you hear me? You, how can I put a little bit in all these other empty vessels? Somebody, oh, God's talking to somebody in here today. He said the, the, the oil of your faith is going to produce a lot of oil. Uh, listen to me. Then, then, and then so she has the audacity and has the faith to go home and try it. <laughs> Most people today would say, okay, you're crazy. And I'm going to go home and ain't nobody going to be asking nobody for no bottles. And we're not going to, that's stupid. I have a little oil left and I cannot feel. Let me tell you guys a quick secret in the middle of this story I'm telling you. Um, There's about, when did I make this bottle, honey? About a year ago, and it's still like that much left in there. I use it at least every other Sunday. Why is it not going empty? I thought I should have been making a new one by now. What's going on? This oil seems to be never ending, which tells me that this is the real deal, holy feel. God really did bless this oil, but I knew it when I had faith over it. I knew it when I prayed over it. I knew it when God gave me the ingredients to make it. I knew it was the real deal. And this is why it's on my stand every Sunday, because I'm ready to use it, because I know it's not going to run. I'm not being conservative. I ain't got that much left, and I have to make a whole new batch, so let me be conservative with it. God says, pour that oil. Pour that oil. So this lady has the audacity and nerve to go back, 2 Kings chapter 4, go back and do what the man of God said. And she gets these, this, her little oil and gets all of these empty jars, and she begins to fill f- fill. Fill, she begins to fill the other jars with her little bit of oil. So much so that she filled up all the jars and then she told her son, hey, give me the next one. And they said, there are no more jars, mom. They're all full and there are no more. She said, go get some more. They don't have any more. That's it. And so she went back to the man of God and said, oh my God, 
oh my word, it worked. What do I do? He said, now take that oil and sell it and pay off all of your debts. And you should have plenty left over to take care of you for the rest of your life. I'm trying to tell somebody in here that the oil from your faith is going to be so powerful that it will give you everything you've been praying for and that you've been asking for if you will just have the nerve and the attitude, the audacity, the spirit of faith. I said your faith is producing an oil that will change your disappointment into an ointment that you can heal the sick, raise the dead, you can do all of these things that Jesus said. You will do the same things I did and even greater. Fear fighting faith. Somebody say that with me. Fear fighting faith. And then I want to remind you of this. The mustard seed faith. When Jesus said they couldn't cast out demons, it was simply because they didn't have enough faith. Not that they weren't equipped to do it. He gave them the equipment, but Sometimes we can have the equipment, but sometimes the, the problem is the user. <laughs> sometimes it's, it's, it's man, man's error and not the equipment. Uh, God said, I gave you the ability, but right now it's your thought process. You don't have enough faith. He says, if you just have the faith of a mustard seed, you could say to this mountain, move from here to there. And I've been telling you and reminding you that if you, have, if you can do that with mustard seed faith, imagine what you can do with a whole mustard plant faith. You can change your world and the world of others around you by having faith, the attitude of faith. And then I want to run these scriptures by you. I want to remind you of these scriptures. I want to start, go back first. I want to give you this just to remind you that, oh, sorry, that's me, sorry. Just to remind you in 2 Timothy, it says this, 2 Timothy 1.7, English Standard Version says, For God gave us a spirit not of fear, hold on, catch on to this now, but of power, love, and self-control. You mean God gave us power, and he gave us a spirit of love, and he gave us a spirit of self-control, but he did not give us a spirit of fear, which lets me know one thing, ladies and gentlemen, makes one thing very clear to me. Whenever we're making a decision to live in fear, we are not operating on God's terms. That means we are allowing the enemy's tricks to dictate how we make decisions. This is why they say don't make decisions when you're mad. Don't make decisions when you're scared because you're going to make the wrong decisions. Amen. So that says for God gave us, read it with me, a spirit not of fear, but of power and love and self-control. Let's read that all together one more time. Let's go. For God gave us a spirit not of fear, but of power, love, and self-control. And let's go back with the very scripture we started with in today's lesson. Isaiah 41.10 says, read it with me, guys. Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Will you stand with me today? Will you stand with me today? And as we close out this series, as we come to our conclusion today of the attitude of faith, I really need to share this with you. God told me to start the year off with this series because he said this would be the foundation of the direction of the families in this church, the direction of this church. And if we could get this seed in our souls, in our hearts, in the first quarter of this year, that we would take off from here. That 2020 would be the best year that we've had in years. That 2020 would be the launching pad of the rest of our decade if we make a choice to have faith and have an attitude of faith. Not just tell people, oh yeah, I'm faithful, but to 
show people that we're faithful. Not just to tell people, oh, yeah, I believe in God, but show them that we believe in God. Not to tell people, yeah, I believe Jesus died for my sins, but to show people that we believe that God, that Jesus died for our sins, okay? And that we believe in a Holy Spirit that is our navigation system, okay? So what I want to do one more time is read those, these three scriptures. We're going to read three scriptures in closing. The first one is 2 Timothy. Again, let's read it one more time. It says, for God gave us a spirit, not of fear, but of power and love and self-control. And then now I want us to read this one, Isaiah. Let's read it together. Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. And then our thread scripture, I want you to read this with me. Let's read it together. Faith is the confidence that what we hope will actually happen. It gives us assurance about things we cannot see. So I want you guys, as you leave here today, and as we concluded this series, the attitude of faith is this. This is not just for the first quarter. This is not just for the month of January and February 2020. <laughs> this is the attitude that you should be the foundation of the new you. I've been knowing God all my life. I've been doing this. Yeah, but have you been walking around with an attitude of faith? I didn't say an arrogance. <laughs> I didn't say with a, a spirit of being conceited. I said an attitude of faith. Believing in God. Believing in the Son. Believing in the Holy Ghost. The Holy Spirit. And may I add, believing in the word that was inspired by God, written to us to be a blueprint for how we are to live our lives, how we are to solve problems, how we are to deal with one another, how we are to pray. Everything we need is in the book of life. The book of life is the Bible. Amen. So the attitude of faith is your foundation for this year, that no matter what comes on to you this year and things will happen, you're going to make a choice to have an attitude of faith. And you're not going to live in fear. And you're going to walk in faith even when it's uncomfortable. You're going to walk in faith when it doesn't look like you want it to look. You're going to walk in faith when people are not agreeing with you, but you know it's from God. You're going to walk in faith when it seems impossible. You're going to walk in faith because you know that you have been redeemed by the blood of Jesus. And you're going to walk in faith because you're not going to walk in fear. Amen. Amen. Amen.